Well, on Panthers TV, what a delight to be joined by a former Panther in PC Druin. It's the 25th anniversary of the Panthers' move to the Motor Point Arena slash National Ice Centre because it wasn't called the Motor Point Arena in those days. 25 years since Panthers moved into that home. PC, first of all, welcome. It's a pleasure to speak to you again. How's life? How are you doing? Well, thanks for having me. I'm I, I I'm loving life right now. Everything's great. Um, I I'm living in Indianapolis. Uh, I have two boys that are in pretty highly involved in hockey. Um, one 14 and one 16 year old. So uh, we're about to start the seasons here for them. And uh, I, I my free time just goes completely away. Um, Every weekend, we're traveling quite a bit and uh, watching the boys play. So they've got the hockey bug. Are they as good as you? I don't. Yeah, I mean, I don't know. I, it, it's hard to tell. Hey. Um, I, it, the, I I think they, they have a combination of, of maybe what I had. My my oldest uh, has got a, a knack for the net, can, can put the puck in the net. He's got a great shot. And my oldest, uh, my youngest is a, is a defenseman now. He's a pretty offensive defenseman um, and, and doing really well, too. So I, I, I don't know. Time will tell. Now, for people, fans that don't remember, I mean, people that do remember you know all about your PC. But for people that don't remember you, you came to the Panthers after a bit of a stint in the AHL, a bit of time in the East Coast Hockey League, those three games in the NHL with Boston Bruins. I, and there's so much I want to talk to you about. But let's talk about the fact that you played in the in the best league in the world. What do you remember about those three games in the NHL? Fortunately, my memory is really blurry. I, I wish I rem remembered more. Um I, I remember the preseason. I, I think I played like five games in the preseason, travel with the team on the on the West Coast. So that was really cool. And then my my call up came uh, after I was just coming back from an injury, a knee injury. So um, I didn't feel my greatest. And, and I played, I think the stats had me at three games, but I played four games. Um, the the cool thing about my my NHL days is is who I got to play against. I think yeah. um, in in the regular season, my first game was against the defending Stanley Cup champions, the the Avalanche, and they had Lemieux, Forsberg, um, Sakic. Uh, so I played against all those guys, and then uh, one of my games was at Madison Square Garden when uh, they had Messier, Gretzky. Um, in preseason, I remember playing in, in Vancouver and they had McGillney, Burray. Um, so anyway, just, oh, and probably my highlight was one of my last preseason games in Pittsburgh. And I got to play against Yager and Lemieux. Um, Lemieux was my 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 childhood hero and, and, and idol. So uh, it was awesome to, to, to be on the same ice as those guys for, for those games. I can just imagine what what memories, as you say, you know, they may fade with time, but you know they'll they'll always be there with you. Uh, let's just quickly move on to the fact that you then came over to the UK before you came to Nottingham, which is going to be our main focus of attention. You you joined Bracknell Bees, and unfortunately, that you know that rink is no longer with us. And what do you remember about your first sort of visit in, in coming to the UK and those two years with with Bracknell, where if memory serves me right, you were quite successful. We we had a great team. We, we had a great bunch of guys, and that's really what I remember most about Bracknell, how, how tight our team was. Um, and, and I do remember, unfortunately, that rink. That rink was, wasn't much. <laughs> and I'm not surprised. One of a kind. Not, yeah, it was it was very outdated even even for then. Um, but but we I think we had great success with uh, Dave Whistle as the coach. And um, the two years I was there, we kept the, the nucleus of the team together and uh, did really well. I think my my first year we made it to, to the final four playoffs. And then my second year, we won the league, uh, but didn't do so well in playoffs. I think we had a bunch of injuries and stuff. But um, yeah, it, it, it was awesome. I, I really enjoyed uh, the, the teammates we had there and, and living close to London was was cool, too. We, we, we'd go pub crawling on uh, on Sundays when we didn't have games and, and kept uh, building that that team, uh, that team bonding. 
you say Dave Whistle's there. You know, Dave Whistle came back a year and a bit ago to help out at the Panthers for, for part of the season. So he is still around at the UK hockey scene. I'm just looking again quickly before we move on from some of those players and, and onto your time at Nottingham. It, it really is a great name and I could throw lots of names out at you. But, but one I want to throw at you is Todd Kelman because you're probably aware Todd's built now a reputation for being a very key part of the elite league. He's now part ownership and MD of the Cardiff Devils. He has a major say in the running of the league and, and you know, he's a real sort of heartbeat of the elite league. As a player then, did you feel like he could be a guy that was going to be such a, a influence off the ice and, and basically, he's, you know, he's helped shape the elite league to what it is right now? For sure. Um, Todd was a, a great, great locker room guy. And he was, a, I think he was an underrated player, to be honest. He he was a really good player, but great sense of humor. Uh, everybody loved him on the team. And um, I I remember when, when I left Bracknell, a bunch of my teammates left for Belfast. And um, I, I thought long and hard about maybe going to Belfast myself, just uh just based on some of the friendships I had and, and Todd was, was the main part of that. So um, I keep, I keep touch with Todd, not as much as I should, but uh, I still consider him a great friend. And now I'm not surprised that he's, uh, he's done so well um, in, uh, in the manage managerial portion of, of hockey. And um, I'm, I'm glad he, he did that for, uh, for the, the ice hockey in England. Cause I, I think he's, uh, he's a great proponent of that. On to Nottingham then, and I'm absolutely buzzing that you're the, you're wearing the shirt this this weekend. Well, this year is the 25th anniversary of, of Nottingham's move to the to the arena, and that was a shirt we wore in the first year. I think first of all, because I want to talk about the arena, we had a couple of guys already on this new team who, who walked in and said they can't believe it's 25 years old. It still looks brand new, and I know what they mean. It, it looks very very modern even now what do you remember about being one of the first people probably in the building and first people to play in this amazing facility i i remember i remember that that was a big drawing factor for me to 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 move to nottingham i i remember hearing about the rink and and seeing seeing pictures and videos of it and i thought it was going to be awesome to play in that rink the fact that it had a practice rink attached to it too um what I remember, I think, I think the first few weeks, even when we moved in, the, our locker room wasn't ready yet. So we, we were really, really uh, at, at the, the, the start of it. So um, I got amazing memories of, of playing in that in that rink. Uh, loved it. Loved the atmosphere. Um, the big rivalry with Sheffield and how how uh, how packed and loud it would get uh, for those games. But in general, just a, a Saturday night in Nottingham, um, it was tough to beat. The, whoever we were playing, it, it was awesome. There was a buzz in the air um, and, and the fans were great and, and the rink was awesome. Not change PC. If you walked in again now, um, it's the same. Saturday nights, nothing beats a Saturday night at at the Nottingham Panthers. I think you know where the one game in that season I want to talk about, which everyone <laughs> talks about, you know, already, you know, that was probably one of the most memorable nights in that whole arena. I mean, you know, there's been many in that arena's history, but, you know, some will say for the wrong reasons, other people will say it was the most, you know, I remember bumping into an old school friend that night as, as he was walking out. He said, this is my first game. I'm sold. I'm coming every week. Uh, and, you know, and what we're talking about, if you don't know, and I'm sure if you're a newer fan and you probably weren't there, it was a bench clearance brawl against the Sheffield Steelers. The brawl lasted for about 20 minutes. There was then about a 40 minute cool down time. What do you remember? Because from what I remember, that rivalry was intense all year and something was going to give. It was so intense. So it was no surprise in a way that it did spill over. But what do you remember? You know, that that kind of feeling when those benches cleared and you were like, something's going to go here. <laughs> I, I can believe it when it when it first happened, but uh, yeah, you're right. I think there was a, a definitely a build up of many games to 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 that one specifically. Um, I I remember Barry. What I remember about that is Barry you know, Nykart. Barry yeah. Nykart just taking on like four or five guys of of the Steelers and having no jersey on, and um, but it. it 
I, I, I remember how it, it started. Um, I think it was Dennis Vial cross checked Greg Haddon from behind and Greg yep. got, got pissed off and, 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 um, was starting to go at Dennis and, and whatnot and nothing happened from that. But I think as Greg or somebody else was coming to the bench, I was supposed to jump on and Barry just pushed me to the side. He's like, no, I'm going on. And so he took my spot, jumped on and, and um, really just started going at, at Dennis and, and making him pay for, for, for doing what he did to Greg. And then all I remember Scott Allison just jumping on the ice and, and, doing a Superman cross check at Barry that, that started everything. And like you said, the next 20 minutes was just uh, a blur, just a bunch of players on the ice kind of going, going crazy. And um, I remember Barry again, just, just, I, I can't remember how, how he did it, but he, he just had so many, uh, so many altercations during that, that next, I don't know, 15, 20 minutes. And, seemed like it was never going to end, but at, at some point the cooler he heads prevailed a little bit and, and we were sent to the locker room. And I remember being in the locker room, guys were just, couldn't believe what just happened. You know, the, the energy level was incredibly high. Barry was, was exhausted. Um, and, and funny enough, what I remember after that is that we, we, we came back and we won. We, yeah, we won that game. And, and, that year specifically, Sheffield had had such a great team. I mean, they were they were good at every position. They were deep. They they had like they pretty much had like a AHL All Star team almost. Yeah. They, and they had incredible toughness and um and we weren't we weren't the team. Our caliber was not to theirs. But every 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 time we played them, either in Sheffield or in Nottingham, we we gave them all we had, and we definitely did that night and. After the brawl, um, we we managed to pull a comeback, and it was just it was an epic game. Uh, again, the energy in the in in the place was 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 tough to match. It, I I'll, I'll remember for for all my all my life. It, it was just awesome, and I think I think after all the suspension, the next game in Nottingham, the energy there was was quite high too. And I remember Scott Allison and Barry going at it, and Barry definitely getting the the most of him that time and, and kind of getting his revenge. And, um, but after that, I, everything was settled and we, we kind of just played hockey. And, um, again, we, we, our team was not as strong as theirs, but every time we played them, we, we found a way to, to give them a good game if we didn't win. Well, you're right. Because I mean, they were streets ahead of probably most teams that season. They won the league. In fact, they won the grand slam. Mm -hmm. We were battling to be a playoff team and we'll come on to that famous game in Newcastle very shortly. But, you know, that I remember a 5-0 win at home when, when I know Sheffield nearly didn't turn up because they had money problems and they only just got on the bus. There was a late overtime winner, maybe, by Kevin Hoffman in Sheffield. You you matched up well to them that year. Just one more question about the brawl. Were you one of the guys that just clung on and didn't uh, throw punches? I feel you threw a few punches with someone. If I, I, I got tangled up with a few guys. Um, yeah, from memory, you had to throw a few punches. I, I I was just I remember trying to to get to Barry and to to kind of try to fend people off, but I was getting pulled pulled off for a, a few. Um, I can't remember his name. He was a, a shorter guy, really good player. Um, came from Manchester. Uh, Rick Grant. Uh, yes. Yeah. Yes. Rick Grant. I I remember kind of kind of getting tangled with him, uh, and then I remember. Smith and and Strucci going at it and trying to 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 break that up. Um, but I remember it was just a bunch of different melees. You would be part of one, and then something else would break out, and you'd kind of skate over there to to make sure nothing was uh was getting out of hand. So I I I didn't I, I didn't square off with anyone. That's for sure. But I I, I kind of remember being in the in a mix of a few. Uh, a few uh, a few of those scuffles there. And the crazy thing was, Barry Nykar and Scott Allison, they went at each other so much 
And I think two years later, the year after you left, they, they became teammates and, and best friends. But that, that really is hockey for you, isn't it? So to that yeah, yeah. game, I know it wasn't the, the National Ice Centre, but it was a memorable game. And again, if, if memory serves me right, I don't think we'd won away in regulation time. Apart from cup games, we, the, the road form that year was terrible. Home form was great, but road form was, was pretty bad. And I don't think the Panthers had got a league regulation time win at all. And the night, I don't know whether you remember, the night before, we needed that one result to go our way to still be within a chance. And I can't remember what that result was, but it went our way. And then there we are, 2-2, I think it was, with Newcastle. And uh, Bob Nordmark steps up, had come in late season. You needed to win in regulation to get in the playoffs. What do you remember about that play? Were you on the ice? I can't remember whether maybe you were at right point or something. What do you remember? Yeah, I, I was on the ice. Um, I I remember uh, being so disappointed before right before the playoff, uh, right before that that faceoff because we were up to nothing in yeah. that game. And I don't I can't remember how late they they tied it, but I just remember oh shoot, you know we just we had it and we 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 let it slip away. Now we're not going to play in playoffs and whatnot, but. Going back to that that face off, we we've had a, a really successful face off play that had worked maybe two other times during the season, um, not not specifically for for a, a late you know game winner like that, but face off play for uh, for a pass to go across and a one timer, um, and, and I want to say we scored maybe one in Bracknell and one somewhere else, um, so we. We we had a play drawn, um, and and we knew we had been successful, and um, everybody knew their assignment on on the face off, and it was kind of a, a mixture of obviously you got to win the face off, but then you have to have everybody do their their little bit to uh, to make that face off play work. So I can't remember who took the face off, but everybody else had their guy, and and there, was, I think it was Greg Hadden who took the face off. I think you're right. I think it was Greg, and I think he won it to Hoffman. Hoffman, he did. He did. Yeah. I can still and remember then, Colin, Colin Frey, my colleague, still at the BBC. I can still remember his commentary, which was amazing. But yeah, Haddon to Hoffman. Haddon to Hoffman and then to Nordmark. And I remember the play was Nordmark would, would line up on the inside um, and then back up. And I would take his guy and all of a sudden I would have two guys to, kind of looking over me and he would get freed up and it just worked out perfectly. And I remember on if the face off was on the other side, it was my job to to be what what Nordmark did and, and put the one timer in the net. All or nothing. Hadden wins the face off. Feeds it to Hoffman. And it's there! I, you know, I, I've played a lot of big games. Uh, I played 15 years total pro, and I'll, I'll always remember that that moment. That was just awesome because you're coming from a high. You're up to nothing. You you, you think you you've done what you need to get in the playoffs, and then you you screw it up, and you you're, you're down in the dumps. And all of a sudden, again with like 10 seconds left, um, you, you're elated again. So that that was a great moment. It was amazing. And, and it was, I think in the playoffs, we didn't do much and we didn't make the final four. But just to have that moment was just unreal. And I remember it was my first season covering the team for the BBC. And we went to the rink in Newcastle and did live commentary led by uh, Colin Frey and myself and my colleague Robin as well. A gentleman called Charles Slade, who sadly is no longer with us. But yeah, there was a huge traveling amount of Panthers fans and seeing the smiles on their faces was, was just amazing. Now you formed, uh, again, I'm pretty sure I'm right here, but you correct me if I'm wrong, because, you know, if I am wrong, I've got one of my favorite lines in Panthers history wrong. But for much of the season, you you signed, you formed a formidable line with Strucci and Ashley Tate, which yeah. he scored a lot of points. Ashley, obviously, in his earlier part of his career, he went on to great success. But the three of you were, were three of the top four scorers in the league, sorry, in the Panthers scoring that season. Yourself in league play got 54 in 48. Lucy got 39 in 47. And then Ashley got 28 in, in 43. I think if you ask many Panthers fans of that era, they'll still say that was one of your favourite lines. Just remember, remind me what it's like. I mean, Strucci, what a guy, what a legend. And then and Ashley Tate, obviously, at the start of his career. 
both great guys, great players, and and we were just a, a good fit, all, all, all three of us together. I remember coming in my first season, uh, and I think I, I think they had planned to play me with with Greg and uh, with Hatter and and Leachy, um, and we did in preseason, and we played okay, but nothing really clicked, you know. And then uh, I, I I can't remember the coach's name at that time. Um, Super nice guy. Uh, in in that year, so 2000, 2001, we, that would have been um, Peter Woods. But before then... that, so he came middle of the, the season and, and kind of took our team over. But the person who recruited me there. Well, um, the lady obviously was there as well, but I don't think he was head coach at the time. No, he wasn't. Um, shoot, shoot, shoot. Anyway, uh, I, I remember going to him and saying, hey, look, let's try to switch the lines and, and see what happens. And um, I remember the first game of the season, we hadn't played uh, anything but practice. We hadn't played in a preseason together, but uh, the first game of the season, he put me, Strucci and, and Ashley together and uh, it just clicked. We just had instant chemistry. Um, Ashley was, was a good young player. He was hungry. Uh, he had good skill and, and Strucci was just a, a great like veteran centerman who who loved to uh to dish to the to his wingers and, and take care of the the defense kind of so it worked out really really well i love playing with those guys and again like anytime you can have um instant chemistry with 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 teammates like that it, it's it's like magic in a bottle kind of and that's what we had that year I just realized who was coached that year because he then moved on to director of hockey. It was Alex Dampier who was coached. That's that right. That's who it Alex was. Alex Dampier yes. moved on. And then the following year, which we can which we can touch on now, Alex Dampier became director of hockey. And Paul Lady, obviously one of our most legendary players, uh, took over that year. And again, an, an, another great scoring year for you. 52 points in 48 games. Uh, that was the year that we uh, first saw the arrival of Lee Jimman. I'm trying to piece together who might have been your line mate that year. I guess you probably stayed with Ashley Tate, did you? I did uh, for a while. And then I, I remember Strucci moved on to, to another team, which which was disappointing. But um, I, 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 as soon as Lee came in, he, he came in. Few... Maybe late, a little bit late. Maybe for right, Yeah, like a couple late. weeks late or something like that. And uh at, at some point we we started connecting together and again we we had great chemistry lee was a super super skilled forward uh great to play with and awesome awesome guy i'm sure you remember him just yeah just so many laughs with him but he, he was a great player and, and again i i was lucky enough to to get on his line and and and, and score some goals and, and get some get some chemistry going and how was it to play with someone like Jim Pack, who came to the club as a two-time Stanley Cup winner and obviously a, a legend of the game. It's, you know, remember his signing in Nottingham Hammett, the excitement and the interest. Of, you know, amazing guy on the ice and, and classy of it. I've been lucky enough to, you know, he's been back to Nottingham. I went up to Korea to work with the GB women's team and, and you know, he was working within the career organisation there and I had a chance to spend time with him and Courtney, you know, amazing, what an amazing family. But, you know, w what a great guy to to be with on and off the ice, hey? It, it was a pleasure to play with him. He was, he, he was a great player, but he was an even better person. I remember my first year, he, he lived right across from me. So we, we drove a lot together. We spent a lot of time together and he was just, he was just the nicest person. Um, and a great hockey player. I, I really enjoyed playing with him and wish I could have played with him for a few more years. That would have been great. And then you did come back for a short time in the elite league. And obviously that the league had changed a lot then, but you obviously played alongside a lot of Panthers favorites like Sean McCaslin, Corey Nielsen and Kevin Bergen. Then obviously British players like Matthew Myers, I think David Clark that season had, had probably moved on to, to Italy just for the season. What were your memories about, coming back that year i know it wasn't for the full year in the end but what you know how was it you know how how did the place change or was it just still the nottingham that you always loved and remembered yeah i i was really excited to come back um i I'm, i was disappointed it didn't work out but um it started off started off with a bang like we we had a, a bit of a, a european training camp 
um and that yeah, we was, went to you know, went to morzine we went to morzine that's right went to morzine and that, that was awesome uh getting to to bond with the the team then and um and then coming back i remember one of our first game i think it was a cup game and uh we were playing coventry i think or anyway we uh, we ended up winning i i, I had I had a bunch of points and it was feeling good and then um went into a bit of a slump and and you know obviously you get slumps in 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 a career and uh it didn't really have a chance to come out of it um we decided to to move on and i came back home and it, it was probably meant to be my my wife was uh was expecting that uh that year maybe my head was somewhere else i don't know um but came back in in fort wayne and ended up playing for four more years here in fort wayne and um won some championships and and was able to to get out of a slump and, and start playing well again and, and it all worked out i'm just looking at the game in question it was a it was a charity shield match which uh which you played in in, in pre-season and i'm just looking here uh pc drew in three goals including the winner at 48 56 um yeah, you scored right. three goals. You got to score three goals that night, and and interestingly, yeah. you you came up against the the current Panthers coach. Again, you might might you might remember him because he was a great character in the day. Danny Stewart, who played for for the Blaze that night, was a long time Blaze player. He's now taken over the club this season. Do you remember much about Danny? Because he was a real competitor on the ice. 100 percent. I played with Danny here in Fort Wayne. Um, right. My, wow. My first, yeah, my first year in Fort Wayne. I, think, I can't remember if it was my first and second year in Fort Wayne. Um, but anyway, I played with Danny. Yeah, just a, a, a character, not very big, but as tough as they get. Um, and, and was a good player, quick, fast, good shot. Um, and right in the room, too. So yeah. you, you guys uh, you guys should be in good hands. And um, I, I, I wish him well. Yeah, absolutely. And, and a real heartbeat of the team already. And, you know, you, his passion on the ice. And he's been with the Coventry Blaze organisation for, for many years and and now with the Panthers. If you could sum up, PC, what, you know, you, you stayed here for two years. You know, you were a player, you know, in the Super League era that was in demand. You could have probably gone anywhere. You know, I know you turned down offers from Europe to come back to Nottingham in the past. What what was it then that made Nottingham so special that made you come back more than once? Um, Just loved it. Uh, the city itself, the the people. Um, we, my, my wife and I, just had a a big fiftieth uh, birthday party in Mexico, and um, we had three of our really good friends from Nottingham come. So we 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 met great people, people that we're still really close to and 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 really friends with. Um, so it was a combination of that. Believe it or not, but the rink, I, I love I love that rink um, and, and the atmosphere in it. So it was a lot of fun playing there. Um, and I remember as, as well, one of the big uh, thing that, that got me there in the first place was um, I, I, it was I felt like it was moving on up a little bit from Bracknell. But my wife was uh, was was about to attend Oxford to get her. Uh, for PhD, so um, it, it was not too far from Oxford, and, and we could make it work. So um, that's what got me there. But uh, if if I could have, um, I probably would have played there for the rest of my career. I, I just really, really enjoyed it. Do you think then? I mean, you moved around. Obviously, you played in France, and and obviously you you played in some of the top leads in North America. You know, you mentioned in in Fort Wayne. Is it still then, and also in the top league in 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 Dem and in Germany? Sorry, that's where you went after you left the Panthers. Does that still rank though Nottingham right up there with with all the places you've been? It does. Um, I would say hockey wise, Germany and in Finland were were a notch higher, um, but in in terms of overall experience, definitely Nottingham was 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 at the top of the list. Um, the players, the people, uh, you know, when you're in Germany, it's great, except you, you, you go to the grocery store and you, you can't speak English or you can't speak German. So um, it, it made it a lot easier to, you know, to obviously speak the language and, and uh, England became very familiar after, after playing for four years. So um, yeah, it, 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 my, my time in 9 was, was, was great. Both my wife and I will always remember it with fond memories.
That's awesome. Look, just before you go, just just twist around because we are paying, you know, sort of tribute to the 25 years with this shirt. You see that logo there. So Drew in 17, the famous number. And, and there it's the, the, the picture's gone slightly blurry now from the start. But but fans will see that. No doubt. Very that. Good indeed. But yeah, we, we, we it, it's almost like I, I've used up too much of your time and it's gone a bit blurry. Um, but <laughs> that, that, that's great. We've been talking for too long. Um, but listen, PC, that's been fascinating for me to, to go back through these memories. I hope you've enjoyed it as much as I have. And I'm sure the fans will love it. Even those ones that perhaps weren't watching those 20 odd years ago to to find out what it was like. And uh, yeah, listen, PC, appreciate you taking your time. And, and I'm sure we'll catch you again soon. But thank you for now. Thank you, Chris. Great seeing you and good luck this season. Thanks, PC.